Hello, hello. Hey, guys. Hey, Alexi. Hey, Isaac. Hey, guys. What's up? Cool. So since we're starting out, let me just flash this across the screen for folks who are just joining. Let us know where you're joining us from. Um, but yeah, Alexi and Isaac, I'm curious to know, because I was having a little bit of like a lagging issue earlier. How is the weather where you are? Because here it's like autumn slash fall. And so it's like brisk and cool, but you don't get that like nice crunching leafy sound when you're walking outside. It's like mushy and gross right now. Is it the same where you are? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's the same. Oh, oh sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I, I was going to say, yeah, it's the same here. It's uh, we get we don't have the crunchy leaves yet. Uh, we have the mushy water. Ugh. Yeah, for us in London, it's very cloudy and rainy. So, yeah, the usual. <laughs> nice. Um, so, yeah, I see some folks are joining us from Argentina. That's pretty exciting. Uh, welcome. If you're new, welcome to Postman Student Community Stream. Again, while you're joining or jumping onto today's stream, let us know where you're joining from. And if you don't yet know about the student community here at Postman, let me actually flash that across the screen. We basically promote API literacy and education amongst students and educators through a couple of different programs. You can find out more about that on our webpage, which you see on the screen here. And that webpage is also where you can explore all of our free programs and earn certifications. Let me quickly flash something else across the screen here. This is our LinkedIn page. So for the folks that don't yet know, we also have a LinkedIn page where you can find all of our recent announcements and updates about the Postman student programs. You can find our latest blog posts, information about upcoming events, both in-person and virtual like this one. But speaking of in-person events, we do have one coming up in November for any educators in the Bay Area. We're hosting a social mixer for local educators, and we'll be showing some folks how to teach APIs using Postman and Twitter. So more information about that mixer is available on that LinkedIn page. Let's see, we have some folks joining from Brazil, from Dallas, Texas. Super cool. Very happy to share some time with you. Oh, let's do. <laughs> awesome. So with that, let's you know do some formal rounds of introductions. We had a little bit of a small talk earlier, but I'm sure you're curious to know who's on here with you today. My name's Ruby, and I'm a senior developer advocate here on the Postman Student Programs team at Postman. I'm coming to you from Providence, Rhode Island, which is on the east coast of the United States. I host these streams with my co-host, Isaac. And Isaac, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Isaac Atif, and I'm a developer advocate also on the student programs team here at Postman. And I'm also super excited to be back again with Ruby, bringing you a brand new stream. So I'm coming to you live from New York, also on the East Coast. And uh, we're happy to bring another special guest on today. Everyone, please say hello and welcome our special Postmonaut guest. Hi, guys. Alexi. I'm actually based in London, in the UK. And I'm really excited to be part of this stream. Uh, and I'm a solutions architect at Postman. So my job is to help our customers understand the different features that Postman offers as a platform, but also help them as well technically when they've got any questions about uh, using the APIs uh, with Postman, but also how to build APIs as well with the platform as well. Super exciting. Um, so Isaac, do you want to let folks know what they can expect from our stream? Yeah, for sure. So by joining our stream, you can expect us to come uh, with a regular event, tune in to catch uh, episodes where we talk and explore APIs, where we'll talk maybe tips and tricks on what you can do at different um, social events, like a hackathon. We'll also bring you uh, different things you can learn in Postman, uh, for example, through our student programs, like by joining our student expert program as well. Uh, and we'll just be learning everything live. So this is all, This is none of this is, is rehearsed before. This is all live. The demo is live. So we're learning along with you. Um, so for today's agenda, uh, Ruby, you can go ahead and introduce it if, uh, if you want. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for that breakdown there. So like we just met right now, we have Alexi with us today and he just shared that he's a solutions architect, which means, correct me if I'm wrong, Alexi, that you help build solutions for folks. That's right. Correct. Nice. Well, we have a mostly student audience on the screen. 
uh, and they come across some challenges, especially if they're new to the tech space. Oh, looks like we're getting some extra audio in there. Seems fine now. But yeah, we have students on our stream um, in our audience that come across challenges sometimes, and especially if they're new to this space, to the software engineering space. And they usually build using public APIs. So it's super great to have you with us today, because I know you're a, a public API pro, and you're also a pro at using Postman. So we've seen folks in our chat on previous episodes and during workshops ask about using APIs that access music. We immediately thought about the Spotify API because of that. And we kind of want to explore a realistic use case for the Spotify API today. OK. Sounds, Sounds cool. cool. Are you ready to hear what that use case is? Yeah, be excited. I can't wait. <laughs> Let me actually display it on the screen so folks know what we're getting into. Today, we are exploring the Spotify API. And what we're trying to achieve is customizing a playlist to display on like a website that we would be making. So this is like an example scenario. I'm a student. I've never used the Spotify API before. I'm kind of new to Postman as well, so I might not know how to achieve different things. Um, but what I want to do is for my app, I want to customize a playlist that's going to display on that app or on that website. So to do that, Alexi, what should we think about first? What should we do first? Are there any approaches we should think about? Yeah, for sure. So the first thing we should do now is to check the Spotify API documentation and then see what are the different endpoints we could use to do to build the application itself. And then use Postman to test the APIs and see the responses as well from those APIs before building the application themselves. Um, so yeah, I think we should start and check the Spotify API uh, documentation first. Um, so to do that, I will share my screen. Just give me a few seconds. I will need to do that now. Yes. So while Alexi's pulling that up, I do have the link for the Spotify docs up on the screen. So if you're following along, you can open that up in another tab and see what we look through when we're building with the Spotify API. Cool. Perfect. So I will essentially go on to um, my browser and look for the API. So I can see that they've got something called a developer portal that I could potentially use as a way to get if I uh, API documentation, so I'll click on it. And I can now get access to this page that displays the web API that they offer, which I would assume is the API that we could potentially use to call out this. Wait, wait let's just wait here for a quick second. Sorry, uh, Alexi. So, so far, we have found what looks like the Spotify developer docs. But there's like a lot going on up top. How do we know where to go to find what we're looking for? our use case here? That's a good question. So um, as you can see, the developer portal offers a different options. So one of them is a console, but also the, there's a docs section as well, so the documentation. And you can see that within that documentation section, they offer different type of APIs for their services. So one of the APIs that they offer is a web API, which I would assume would be the API that we need to use to get, for example, the list of artists and then use that to display the list of artists inside our application as well. But they do offer other type of APIs as well, which uh, you can see are for iOS, but also Android and other type of um, devices as well. Nice. So we're assuming what we need is in the web API. We can always you know, check ourselves by opening that up and seeing what kind of uh, endpoints, for example, are available there. Sure. So let's have a look. So let's click on the web API and check the documentation. So it looks like the, this documentation has um, REST APIs endpoints. So you can see that this um, indicates that they offer an API that is a REST for API. And this API can be used to return data from the Spotify API. So in order to see, for example, the different endpoints, I would assume that we need to go to the reference uh, section, which is usually the part of a developer portal where the developers will have an option to see the different endpoints that a specific APIs offers. Um, but I can also see there's a section called guides, 
and also libraries as well. So let's have a look at the different uh, sections before jumping into the reference uh, tab as well. So clicking on the guides, let's have a look. It looks like they give you a few steps on how to uh, potentially authenticate or authorize your API requests. They also give you a guide as well to work with playlists and they talk about weight limits and um, different options for app modes as well. Hmm. The library section is um, potentially, they potentially talk about the different API types. So the first one is using the web API, using the authorization code flow. And we get a few examples that we could potentially use to build the APIs, which is very handy. Yeah, so we often promote checking out the docs uh, prior to jumping into any project, right? And especially API docs, because um, there's always helpful information in there. So thinking back about our goal here, um, we'll probably need endpoints related to playlists um, and maybe even songs, right? Because we want to customize our playlist. But on this web API landing page, um, so if you select web API there on the left, the top left gold, awesome. That's like where you would land, right? Right when you go into the web API. On there, it's probably going to tell you if you need anything to get started. Um, I think it was like all the way on the bottom on this page, uh, if I recall, some me mention of needing authentication for using the endpoints. Um, so I wonder if maybe that's where you were arriving at, uh, Alexi. But it's always helpful to know whether or not you do actually need authentication. So something I'm thinking about, for example, is APIs that have endpoints and requests that you can make without authentication. Like some get requests you can make without authorizing anything. Um, but the Spotify API here looks like it indicates it does need that. So I wonder what we should do there. So I think what we should do first is potentially go to the guide section and have a look at the authorization guides first before we start using the API itself. Gotcha. So clicking on the authorized guide, let's have a look. And it looks like the API itself utilizes an auth to flow to issue a token. So all of two is essentially a way for an, um, a service to provide a token that will authenticate the API request. So in that case, I would assume that in order to access the Spotify API, I need to get a, an access token from Spotify and use that access token to call out the different endpoints that I might need to use in my project, for example. So let's have a look and see how we could potentially obtain those tokens and also, it looks like they offer different options in regards to the token generation as well. So when it comes to OF2, OF2 is a protocol that allows you to get an access token uh, using different options. So you can use something called an authorization code flow uh, using PKCE, which essentially allows you to authenticate yourself against a browser. And after that, you get a token back from the uh, service that you're trying to use, which in this case would be Spotify. They also offer another option, which is called client credential, which is essentially a way for you to call the Spotify endpoint to get a token server side without having the need to use a browser in that case. So, Sorry, Alexi, uh, I keep in chiming in. Um, but something I'm thinking about, because I want to reel it back and you know ground ourselves in a student's like mindset, right? This is all super helpful, but it can also be pretty overwhelming if we aren't seeing where that's supposed to be plugged in or where we would use this information. Um, so is there maybe a space in Postman where all of this is, is relevant? And then maybe we can come jump back and see more information on this? For sure. And I think the best thing to do now will be to potentially create a Spotify account and then get access to their or to um, uh, code flow first. And then after that, we can just jump into the Postman and then test out the APIs that way. So what I would do now, I will essentially go to the dashboard and try to, can, try to create an account. So what I will do, I'll click on the login option and create an account on their developer portal, which I would do with my Google account. We'll just do that. Just add my name, and my date of birth maybe. I don't think it's required, so I might need to skip that for now, and I will 
click on sign up. Actually, this is required, so I'll just uh, add to it. We'll just pull it down for a sec. <laughs> Keep that one a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. I, I managed to stand up. And now I've got access to this page where I can essentially consent to the terms of services. And I get now access as well to the dashboard, which I could potentially use to create an app to get an access token from Spotify. Nice. So, so it, sorry. Uh, it sounds like we are needing an access token. But to do that, we had to create an app in Spotify's developer dashboard. Does that sound right? That's right, yes. So in order to get an access token from the Spotify API, we might need to create an application, which is essentially our application we're trying to display our playlist um, onto. And um, we could use that this application to get credentials to essentially get an access token from Spotify. So what I will do now, I will essentially create an application. And I will, for example, call it my web app. And I will click on create. I'm going to try the description as well. It says. So while Alexi is creating his app here, we got a really cool comment from Royal Lorenzo. The closest I've ever been to a Spotify API is using a Twitch widget that reads the song you're listening to at the current moment and shows the title and artist on screen. That's really awesome. So it sounds like we're trying to achieve something similar, right? Our, let me flash this across the screen again. Our mission here is to customize a playlist to display on a website. So what we're doing or what we will eventually do in Postman here is something we want to translate to a project, just like you had been working on a project as well. Thanks so much for sharing that. There's lots of different ways that you can use these APIs. For sure. And uh, to go back to my flow, I will finish with the creation of my application. So now I've got access to this view. And I can see on the left hand side, we are given a client ID. And I can see as well, there's an option to get a client secret. So usually with an OAuth 2 flow, you might need to create a token using the two credentials. For the purpose of this stream, I will essentially make it visible. But again, I can rotate the client, the client secret if needed. So I could potentially do that after the stream. Uh, so you, you don't spam my APIs. <laughs> um, but um, I would essentially use those credentials to authenticate the uh, Spotify um, API and get an access token from Spotify and then use the token from Spotify to make out uh, some to make some requests um, on their side as well. So Alexi just mentioned really quickly something about OAuth 2 flow. Um, that's because we saw in the docs, right, Alexi, that we need OAuth 2 with uh, Pixie, right, or PKCE. That's right. So if you go back to the documentation itself and you check the documentation, it looks like you need to authenticate the request first. And if you go, for example, to guides and click on authorization guides, you can see that they mentioned the fact that you need to get an OAuth 2 token to call out the Spotify APIs. And they give you a few options. So you can use the different um, OAuth 2 uh, protocols or options. So one of them is authorization codes, but you can also use the other options like PKCE and client credentials as well. And I would assume that they give you also steps to utilize the access token. So if you click on that link, you can potentially see an example on how to get a token and how to use it as well. So this endpoint is a Spotify um, endpoint. And you can see that in order to authorize this request, you need to pass a header and also bear a token uh, or an access token um, inside that header as well to authenticate the request. Hmm. So, so, so far, it sounds like we only have a client ID and a client secret, but we do need this bearer token. Um, how would we go about that? That's a great question. So I would assume that if, for example, we select the um, of two um, option that we want to use. So on the left hand side, we've got the different options. We've got the authorization, um, authorization code flow and the client credential flow. Uh, but before we do so, you can see as well the steps needed to essentially create your application. So you can see that you can go to your dashboard just like I did. And you can essentially see as well how to get your client ID and your client secrets. 
And after that, I would assume they would give you steps as well to utilize the tokens. So let's have a look. So I'm just going to the next page. And you can see something called scopes, which essentially allows you to define permissions that you can use to uh, call the Spotify APIs. But we'll just park that for now. And I will select, for example, um, the out of two flow that I might, I might want to be use, using for this uh, example. So you can see that this documentation explained the steps needed to obtain a token from Spotify. So the first step, again, is to add um, the Spotify uh, token endpoint and specify the client ID and the client secrets, but also the grant type as well. So the grant type is essentially the different uh, API, um, the different OAuth 2 options. So one of them is client credential, and the other one could also be authorization code as well. So let's have a look. So if I scroll down a bit more and I check the documentation, Something I'm noticing here, Alexi, um, you mentioned client, and there's a lot of like language about client. Something I think um, many folks don't realize is that the client is really anything that's making the API request and seeing responses, right? So if we're using Postman or Curl or our application, all of those things can be considered a client because they're the ones making that API request. So if we're using Postman, let's just like imagine in our brains that the client here is Postman and, you know, Postman's going to need that client ID, client secret, and grant type to get that access token. That's what it looks like here. Am I right there, Alexi? That's right. So essentially, the client would be my application, which in this case will be Postman. And I need to essentially request an access token from the Spotify services or service in that case. And uh, in this diagram, you can see that in order to do that, you need to pass on the client ID and secret and the grant type. And then you can get an access token back. Then you can then use to call the Spotify web API to get the different uh, information that you might require in that case. So let's just do that. So what I will do now is I'll go back and um, go back to the documentation that we used earlier and go to references or reference in that case. And I can see inside this documentation I've got a list of different endpoints that I could potentially use. So we've got endpoints to, for example, get an album. Um, I could potentially get um, an artist as well, if needed, or even the top tracks from an artist. But I can also, for example, uh, create, a, create a playlist and also uh, update a playlist as well. So if I were to click on one of them, so let's say I wanted to get the list of uh, top tracks from an artist. I can click on it and I can now see the documentation for that specific API. So on the right hand side, you've got, for example, a call request that you might want to use to make that API request. And you can also see that in order to make this request, you require um, an authorization uh, option, which is essentially the OAuth 2 token that we spoke about earlier. And within the documentation as well, you can essentially see the different um, parameters you can pass to your API as well in order to get a response back. So what I would recommend that we do now is jump into the Postman, into the Postman platform and try to use the Spotify API within Postman. Sounds so, good. Um, so while you're making that shift, I do want to remind folks that uh, this is the Postman Student Programs stream. And if you wanted to find more information about our programs, you can find it at this link. If you are interested in joining our community where we share fun projects, um, memes, ideas, events, hackathons, um, you're free to do that as well and join us on Discord where that's where we have all these discussions. But right now, again, we are exploring the Spotify API with our friend here, Alexi, and my co-host, Isaac. And now we're transitioning from looking at the docs to applying that to Postman. That's right, perfect. So in Postman now, I've got access to this workspace that I can use to make API requests. So in order to start with the Spotify API, I will essentially create a new collection, which is essentially a folder that I will be able to use to add uh, API requests uh, into. So I'll just call my collection, for example, Spotify. 
API. And then click on Save. And now I've got my collection, and that collection is empty now. So let's go back to the Spotify API documentation, and let's try to get, for example, um, the, the list um, of top tracks from a specific artist. Uh, so, Alexi, can I pause you right there just for a quick second? Um, I know we want to take our student use case and make that come alive in our Postman collection. Um, so if we're thinking about a student who's never used Spotify API before, what they are hoping to do is find a playlist that maybe they created that is a public playlist um, as a first step, right? We want to know what playlist this user has. Um, and then once we find that playlist, you know, we want to customize it and add stuff to it so that they can use that on their website. So is there a request um, or an endpoint that would help us find a user's playlist? Yeah, sure. Um, so I would assume that um, if we go to the left hand side and look for um, get user playlist, there you go. So on the left hand side is an endpoint called get users playlist. And we could potentially use that to get the playlist of a specific a Spotify uh, user. So this API requires a parameter, which is essentially a user ID, which will be your Spotify ID. And you can potentially return the list of playlists that um, you might have within uh, Spotify in that case. Yeah, so I see a get slash users slash uh, curly brackets user ID slash playlist. This is what comes after the base URL, right? Is there a base URL um, anywhere on this page that maybe we can grab? I think so. I think on the right hand side, if you go here, I think the base URL is this okay. section. And uh, anything after that is the endpoint itself. So nice. we might need to use that potentially. What is music without bass, right, Alexi? <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Um, so, Shall we give you a test? Do you, have you got any playlists that you might want us to to use, or any user that might want to um, uh, volunteer to give their user ID? Yeah. So I know we have a student programs playlist, and we also well, I, I have my account that has a student programs playlist in it, plus some other playlists. But I'm curious to know if you're able to find my playlist from just my URL in Spotify. So I'm going to share my Spotify profile in our chat here, our super secret chat, uh, which Alexi has access to. And he'll open up my user profile. Um, and the aim here is to find playlists that I have. However, we want to do this programmatically, right? We don't want to cheat by going through Spotify's UI here. Is there a way that you can see my user's playlist through Postman? Um, I would assume that looking at the URL itself, it looks like the URL contains an ID, which could potentially be your user ID. So let's give it a try. So what we try to do is potentially use this specific section of the URL uh, to um, grab your user ID and then use Postman to get the list of tracks or playlists that you've got against your account. So let's give it a try. Yeah, let's try it out. Um, so it sounds like, Alexi has a hunch that the end of the URL here is potentially an ID. I think this is also documented in Spotify's uh, developer docs. So if you check that out, you can see um, that they have links to help you identify IDs. Um, I'll share that Spotify docs link up here for folks who are curious. But Alexi, you can um, go ahead and try out that ID at the end of the URL if you'd like. OK, perfect. Let's do that then. So going back to Postman. Um, what I could potentially do is click on Add Request and potentially copy and paste the uh, URL of the API itself. But I will essentially be a bit lazy today, and I will potentially go back to the Spotify documentation. And on the right-hand side, I identified earlier that they provide a curl request. So what I will do instead, I will just copy this curl request and import that into my Postman collection. So if I go back to Postman and click on Import, you can see that in Postman, there is an option to import a curl request this way. So let's give it a try. 
Nice. And click on continue. And click on import. And now wow. I can see the the API within Postman and I can now start using it as well. And let's have a look at the headers because I believe this API contains a few headers and I can see as well the headers have been added to my Postman uh, requests, which is amazing. Oh, that rocks. There's so many like fun facts about Postman that I find out every day. Um, I had no idea you could just grab that curl request and that'll just auto populate the parameters and everything that you need. That's so neat. Yeah, that's amazing. And they make it so easy as well to consume APIs. So just before I start, I will just save this API against my collection. So we'll just click on save, select my Spotify collection, and then give you a name. I'll say, for example, get users playlist. Save. And now this API is actually um, added to my uh, collection. So again, if I were, for example, to test this API, I need to essentially add um, a special parameter or a dynamic parameter, which is essentially in this case is the user ID. So to do that, I will go back to the Spotify page that uh, Ruby shared with me. And I will try to grab this ID, which I, again, I believe is the user ID. So I'll just try that. Copy that ID. We'll find out, see if it's a success code or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look. And let me try to add this ID here in the URL itself and click on send. And as you can see, um, this API is not authenticated. So therefore, I'm not allowed to make a request. So you can see that I get a 400 uh, error status and with a bad request. And it's because I've not authenticated my uh, API request. Nice. So I love how Alexi just like inspected that error message because I had a, an idea that maybe like the UR, user ID wasn't correct, um, but it's you know straight up telling you it's because there's no authentication, right? So that's something we want to look at first. There's a possibility the user ID is still correct. Um, we still don't know that for sure. We just need to authenticate first. That's right. So let's give you a try. So in order to, again, authenticate the API itself, you might want to get an access token. I mean, you would need to get an access token from the Spotify um, service. So again, let's go back to the documentation that we um, used earlier. And again, in order to get an access token, I need to call a Spotify service to do that. So let's have a look. Um, so I can see that the, in order to get a token, I need to uh, call out a token endpoint, which in this case is this uh, path. But I would assume that the actual endpoint itself is the same endpoint with a different uh, path to it. So let's give you a try. So you're I'll saying it might be the same base URL, but with that same with that path added to it. That's right. So I would I, I would assume they will be the same base URL and uh, just a different path. So to make it easy as well, what I could potentially do is set up this URL as the base URL inside a secret uh, standard variable. And in order to do that, I might need to create what we call an environment variable where I could potentially store some um, variable that could be used against multiple endpoints in that case. So I would just do that. I would essentially create an environment and I will call it Spotify. And then create a variable called base URL. And in it, I will need to add the URL that I believe would be the base URL for the API. That and add that here. And click on save. And now I can go back to my endpoints and select the environment I want to use and also replace this section with my base URL variable. Okay, that's done. So now let's give you a try for the uh, token endpoint. So if I were to get a token from the uh, Spotify service, I could potentially create a new request. So just click on Add Request. So add request. And the endpoint itself is a POST request. So I will 
go back to Postman, select Post, add the base URL. And then I will add a path as well. Oops, sorry. I will add the path slash API token to get an access token from this endpoint. Let's try that. And also, in order to do that, I need to specify a header. And the header is this um, content type, which I will copy and add to Postman as a content type. And let's give it a try. And after that, if I go back to the documentation again, I can see that there's a parameter called body. And the parameter called uh, grant type, which essentially is a body um, parameter. So I will copy that as well. Go back to Postman and go to the body. And I will use the X form encoded because this is what was um, added inside the documentation. So let's um, copy this parameter. Nice. So, uh, Alexi, this request is helping us try to get that bearer token. Is that correct? Or are we achieving something else with this request? That's right. So this request is to get the access token or the bearer token to essentially authenticate the Spotify API. So once we've got the token, we can then essentially use it to call the Spotify API and get the result back from that specific API. Nice. So that bearer token is what we'll use to help authorize all of our uh, requests here in this collection. That's right, yes. Uh, something else that I know folks try in Postman is using the OAuth2 helper. Um, so it looks like Alexi's trying a different strategy here, and that's totally also doable and fine. Um, but at the collection level, if you tab over to authorization, you can select uh, OAuth2 and then select PKCE, or sorry, type would be um, OAuth2, and then access type, or somewhere down here. My vision's failing me at this moment. But yeah, you can select PKCE over here and then plug in whatever you need to that comes from the Spotify developer dashboard and you'll be able to generate a bearer token in this way as well. But it looks like Alexi's trying a different strategy, which is very interesting. And I'd love to see how that works as well. Um, just letting folks know if you wanted to use this option, that's also available too. That's what it, looks like, it looks like we also have a question in the chat, uh, Ruby and Alexi. Oh, from okay. Peter. Oh. What are some of your favorite? Oh, wait, this is from Isaac. <laughs> no, um, no, from Peter. Also, that's also a great question for the audience. Looks like we have a question here from Peter, though. Is there an OAuth flow template so one does not have to create those requests manually? Um, yeah, that's actually what we were just looking at. So Alexi's trying this manual strategy. But in Postman as well, there's always an authorization tab. You can find that at the request level. You can also find it at the collection level. Um, if you tab over to authorization, you can set everything that you need to based on the developer docs. So for Spotify, you need um, authorization with PKCE. It looks like you can select that from here as well. Grant type, client credentials um, on the bottom. You can set your scope and everything that Alexi was looking at earlier as well. So this is like a quick drop down, plug and play, uh, generate a bearer token this way. Um, so that's one way that you can get to it a little bit quicker if that's your, your preference, but the manual way is also fine. Um, so let's check out how Alexi is uh, exploring that. Yeah, we can start off anyway. So I think the first thing I would do on my side is add my client ID and secrets. So ID with my underscore in between. I need to get my client ID for my portal. So just copy that and then go back to the Spotify token endpoint and then add that as a parameter, client ID, and add my client ID this way. And I will do the same thing as well for the client secrets. So just copy that and add client underscore secrets and then paste the secret there as well. Let's have a look, let's just confirm that client ID and secret. There you go. So let's have a look. If I send a request now, uh, I can see that I get uh, no token provided. Okay, so maybe I need to 
uh, the V1. So I've, I noticed earlier there was a V1 uh, path. So we can actually try that instead. No, nope. that's not correct. Yeah, getting that entire path correct uh, can be tricky. And this is where like the developer docs always help. Yeah, I think might need to look for the Spotify token endpoints. So let's have a look online. And let's have a look at the Stack Overflow documentation. And OK, so I'm actually using the wrong um, endpoints to call the Spotify token points. So let's try this one, Ed. So I'll just copy this and go back to Batman and add that here. And then there you go. So you can see that now we got a token back. And I can essentially use that token within uh, my uh, collection to authenticate a request. So I will just do that. So I'll just remove my endpoints because my endpoint was just used as a test to get the token. So I'll just remove this one. And I will use the option that Ruby was talking about, which is the authorization uh, option to authorize the request within a specific collection. So again, if you set up uh, the authorization um, option as an auth to flow, you get a few options. So one of them is the ability to use um, an authorization code flow, but also you got the option to use the authorization code flow using PKC. But in my case, I'm actually using a client's credential instead so I'll be choosing this option in the authorization section. So I'll give my token a name. So I'll call it Spotify Error token. And I need to add my access token URL, which is essentially URL that we got from Stack Overflow. So just copy that and paste it here. So and I had a quick comment about the access token URL. I know it was. Uh... I do the same thing sometimes when it's like really hard to find something in developer docs. Um, you know, that's can be the case with different documentation. It looked like we were able to successfully find it in Stack Overflow. But if you like were to try this on your own and you like really dig in the Spotify docs, sometimes like hidden links are here and there. Um, you'll be able to find these access token URLs and um, even the auth URL if you were to just like really poke and dig around. Um, but yeah, it was super helpful that somebody was already having a concern like this. And so we were able to access through Stack Overflow. Um, ideally, when we have like superb documentation, it should be like right there, easy to find. Um, but in this case, we did have to go to another source. Just a quick comment on that in case folks were curious. Perfect. So let's give it a try. So I'll just get my client ID and then set it up in Postman. You can see there's a section called client ID. And I can add as well my client secret here. And usually, you would essentially store your credentials inside the variable. So it's not actually visible. Um, but uh, just for the demo, I'll just add it this way uh, to make it easier for us to test. Um, so after that, you might need to include some scopes. Um, for now, I'll just leave it, I will just leave it blank. But let's just get the access token. And you can see that now um, the token has been generated. And I can click on proceed. And you can see that now the token has been as well stored uh, inside a variable called Spotify Power Token. So what I can do now, I can essentially use this token. So I'll just click on this button and then add it here. And that is essentially stored against a collection. So every request within this collection will essentially use that specific token uh, to make a request. So nice. So if we save this, we'll be able to use it for all of the requests in this collection. That's right. Yes. So nice. let's give it awesome. Alexia, I have a question. Yeah, sure. So I asked this in the chat for our viewers as well. Oh, nice. Ruby beat me to it. Um, is there a way that our viewers can find your collection and work with it um, themselves? Yeah. So I can answer that one, uh, Alexi, sorry. Um, so right now, Alexi's working in our student team um, account uh, in Postman. And when we're done with this stream, I can you know, transfer everything over to a public workspace. And we'll add that to the description of the recordings of this session. So for folks who are curious, um, they can find that after uh, when the recordings go up in on YouTube and LinkedIn. Perfect. Thank you, Ubi. 
So now the token has been added against my collection, I can now use this token to authenticate a request. So let's give it a try. So if I go, if I go to authorization now against my API request, I can see that I can select, for example, the different authorization methods. But in this case, I want to inherit from the parent, when it's in this case is my collection. So if I do that, I should essentially get a token added automatically to my API request. Um, and before I do so, I just want to go to the header section and potentially remove that specific header, just to make sure there's no conflict. And let's give that a try. So if I click on send, now I'm actually getting um, some a response back, and it looks like the response is a 200 status code. So it looks like the, the request itself was successful. But it looks like the um, actual account that you have, Ruby, doesn't have any uh, items or playlist. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. So it's great that you found that out here. <laughs> um, I do happen to have a link to our playlist, though. So if that's more helpful, there is an actual playlist, I promise. I didn't just make that up. I'll add that to our um, super secret chat here as well. Perfect. So okay. again, By I'm chance, sharing. <laughs> I have a Ruby question. Is there any new Taylor Swift in that playlist? Mm, there might not be just yet, but you know what? We can always add it to that playlist. So it looks like Alexi just opened up our student programs playlist where there's a couple of podcast episodes so far. We have one from Stack Overflow, as a matter of fact, and then we also have um, Breaking Changes, which is from our chief evangelist, Ken Lane. We also have, what is it, Coding Over Cocktails. Some cool episodes here, um, but we can always add songs um, and other podcast episodes, whatever we feel like, now that we have a playlist to work with. Perfect, let's do that then. So I can see that this um, URL contains an ID again, which I would assume is the playlist ID, but let's give you a try um, again. Um, so in order to get the list of um, obviously songs within that playlist, I might need to use a different API because the API I was using earlier uh, allowed me to get a user's playlist. And now I can essentially get the tracks from a specific playlist instead. So let's go to the documentation again. And now let's um, look for an endpoint that is tied to a playlist. And I can see there's something called get playlist items. So I could potentially use that to get the different uh, tracks within the playlist. Let's give it a try again. So just copy the um, curl request as we did earlier and import it again. So just import it as Vortex. And then add that to my collection as well. Just nice. So it sounds like we are trying to see if we can at least get this playlist, right? And see what songs are in there to see um, if one, it exists and Ruby didn't make up this playlist. And two, if like there's songs in there and stuff that we can add more to. Um, so this is a great initial request just to see if things are working just right. And then eventually what we want to get to was our goal, right? We want to add custom stuff to this playlist. Um, Cause this is one that is going to go up on our pretend website, right? That's right. That is right. So let's do that first. So let me get the list of um, tracks within a playlist. So you can see there's a variable called playlist ID. So this is the place where I need to potentially copy and paste the ID into. So I'll just do that. And because I have already authenticated um, the this uh, collection, I can essentially go there again and then make sure that my API is inheriting the authorization from the parent again. So let's give that a try and click on send. And that is actually not the correct. Hmm. Uh, I wonder, so there might be a parameter or something that we had left checked. Um, let's just double check that we didn't leave anything up um, in Postman that we didn't need to have up. Yes, so let's have a look. So I have got my base URL. Um, playlist, and after that, I added the actual ID and then slash tracks. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the documentation, and this is the way they have it as well. Yeah. Let's just quadruple check that we don't have like extra query parameters or anything checked. Um, 
because it looks like the documentation wants some specific parameters. And I think somewhere I saw that you had content type indicated. So you've got a content type set as JSON. So if I go back to Postman, I believe that was imported as well. So yeah, so you might you might not need that. Um, it might just like auto generate. So let's see what happens if you uncheck it. And assuming we have the right playlist ID, we'll see. Let's try um, copying the playlist ID again. I think we might have grabbed the profile ID instead. Oh, sorry, my bad. It's actually my fault. So let's try this again. So just copy this ID and go back to first one and then paste that here instead. OK, that's probably the case. So let's give it a try again. And now you can see that with the correct ID, and sorry again, sorry about that, guys. Um, I made a mistake. I can now get the list of tracks within that specific um, playlist. So that's great. And cool. so, yeah, so we know this works now. So there is a playlist that exists that Ruby did not make up. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we can start adding stuff to it, right, it's with a post request. Um, and I do want to be super conscious of the time here. We want to do like a quick post request if possible. Um, and then we'll jump into some shout outs. Sure. So let's do that. So uh, looking at the docu documentation again, um, in order to add an item to the playlist, I might need to use this API. So add items to playlist. And to be really quick, just because I'm conscious about time, I'll just copy that again with the postman and import the request again. And I will just add the name, save it in my collection first, add tracks. Cool, so it looks like Alexi is setting up a new request um, that'll allow us to now use this very real playlist <laughs> um, to add <laughs> some tracks to. It looks like add items to playlist is a post request. Um, so Alexi just grabbed that curl request, imported it into Postman. And now if we use the right playlist ID, we should be able to start adding tracks. That's right. So if I do that, I can go back uh, to this section and start adding some parameters to the body itself. So you can see the body requires um, a string. And looking at the documentation itself, the string is essentially the track ID that we wanted to get uh, somewhere. So what I would do as well, I would just try to go to the top of this documentation and click on Get Artist Top Tracks. So I'll just click on this link. And I will try to get um, a random artist um, track and add it to my playlist. So let's do that. So I'll just copy again this code request and go back to Postman. On so while Alexi's uh, jumping through this really quickly, um, it sounds like to be able to add something to our playlist, not only do we need the playlist ID, but because it's a post request, the API is uh, expecting a body, right? It's expecting you to give it something to put into the playlist. And we didn't have anything. So Alexi's looking for something for us to put into that playlist by using a different request. That's right. So going back to the documentation, um, there's a parameter called ID, which I would assume would be the artist ID. Um, so let's look for an artist quickly. Do you have any favorite artist you might want to use as an example? Yeah. Sorry, Swift. Isaac had one. Oh, yeah, Taylor Swift. Swift. Okay. Um, let's try that. So, yeah. so I'll just click on a profile. And I would again assume this is the um, um, artist ID, so I'll just copy that. Go back to Postman, and I believe it's after artist, artist, and a slash ID. So let's have a look. I'll just add that here. And then again, make sure that my authorization header is not empty, and make sure as well that my authorization is coming from a parent uh, collection. So let's try that. Uh, I'm missing a country parameter. So the country parameter. Um, hmm. So uh, we can uh, skip this part here, Alexi. Um, it sounds like folks can kind of gather what you're trying to do here is find that top track. I happen to have something that you can add to our add to playlist request um, or add tracks to playlist. It looks like you have named over here. So in our super secret chat, I added um, an array 
that you can just throw into the body so we can see how we're adding something to our, our playlist here. Perfect. I got it. Thank you. So I will get your body request and this is a track ID that you sent over. So I will click on send and give it a try. And before I do so, I just need to add as well the playlist ID. So if I go back to Spotify, grab this ID and then add that to my request and click on send. Uh, this request this request requires a user authentication. Is this APN authenticated? I think this might be the oh. content type thing again, or the authorization. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Again, so let's click on send. And I still get the same error. So let's double check. I might just remove the header completely instead. The beauty of demos, right, guys? <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, we're all learning. I've added yeah. another, sorry, another track here maybe that you can plug in, Alexi. Um, this one is from a Taylor Swift song. So uh, the syntax there is interesting. Um, we can just copy paste that into the body of our request there. Okay. So let's replace that one because I have a feeling that that's already added to the playlist and maybe that's why it's giving us that error. Oh, it's probably that as well. Yeah, so let's give it a try. So let's click on send again. And hmm. I'm still getting the same error. Um, let's see if I'm potentially missing a parameter. So go back to the documentation, add playlist items. And I might be missing the position, I think. There was a position. Sorry, it's not the correct one. It's the add. Hmm. Oh, there you go. So I made to add that as well. So just add the position and see if that works. Um, Oh, interesting. So it looks like in the documentation, there's something else we needed to add to the body here. And Let's try actually. So I wonder if we can just add that to the URL um, of that request. So you have slash playlist slash uh, playlist ID. Looks like you plug that in there. And then you have slash tracks, right? I can't really. Yep. If you put like a query there, a question mark. Um, and we can also see this happening in the params. Um, our query parameter can be called position. OK, position, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah. So that's like right in the in the docs there, too, is that we can have that parameter in this request and see if that works. So for so URI we... position, OK, perfect, let's do that. So I'll just remove the body. Uh, so if you, let's try keeping the, the URI's, URI's body. Um, let's remove position from there, because now we're throwing that into our query parameters. OK. Let's do that. So let's try that and go back here. And then and let's just put it at position zero, make it the first song. Perfect. Let's try it. No, that did not work. Hmm. Um, going back to the documentation again, query parameter. OK, so let's try with um, this um, query parameter called URIs. So I'll just go back to the dashboard, to Postman, uh, remove that body and then add the actual track this way and then send it again. And hmm. again, I'm not getting the result back. Yeah, so, so let's let's uh, pause here for a second because I, I have a feeling that we're like right there. It's like right in the docs that we're just missing a query parameter or something here. But the idea here is that, you know, we'll take an actual um, URI uh, from, from Spotify and plug that into this request. And once we send it, it'll add live to that playlist that we have. Um, but we are short on time here. looks like we have just a quick minute yet left, sorry. Um, so let's wrap up here. But this was such a great start. I did see that we were able to make a couple of get requests. We were able to get auth all set up. So I know this has been super helpful and especially uh, seeing how we could just import um, a request using curl commands. So that was all super helpful. I know lots of folks got a lot out of that. Um, but I do want to end our stream like we always do with a couple of shout outs. So let me see. I did have a couple of links to share across the screen here. First here is our student expert or student programs link. 
So for those who are wondering about our programs again, or you're joining us a little bit later, the Student Expert Program lets you learn about APIs at your own pace, and you can earn some free certification with a badge. But wait, there's more. Student experts also get to join exclusive expert-only events from Postman. And if this is something that's up your alley, do not forget to um, select or to check out our programs and apply for the Student Expert Program. Once you're applying, make sure you select a live stream so that we know where you're coming from uh, when you're applying. Cool. Um, so that is the student programs link. I also want to share our Discord link once more um, because now we're going to jump into our highlights and shout outs. So recently, we've been seeing a lot of folks really stand out on our Discord server, which you can join using the link that you see there. I really want to shout out um, one of our Discord members named Ayush Single. They recently shared an AI-based coding assistant similar to GitHub Copilot, which uh, Ayush created themselves. And if you want to check out his post about it, you can find it in the Share Your Work channel on our Discord server. Again, that link is right up on the screen. So we often see folks doing really cool stuff on Discord. And sometimes the folks who are doing that cool stuff end up on our live streams with us. Uh, last time we had Tony Barozzi's join us on an episode. He came from our Discord community and he taught us about his project that he built with Rust. Um, so that was a super cool conversation we got to have with Tony. Again, if you'd like to join and do some spectacular stuff like Tony, like Ayush, um, you can join that Discord community. Does anyone here, Isaac or Alexi, do you have any shout outs or um, anything you want to share with the audience? Alexi, do you want to go first? Yeah, so I, would just, I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in today. It was a pleasure to uh, be part of this challenge. Um, and uh, it was very exciting as well to demo the platform. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, finish the uh, challenge itself, but it was a great, um, I would say, uh, challenge for me. And thank you again for tuning in today. Isaac, awesome. do you have any shout outs? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you, Alexi, for that awesome demo of using the Spotify API with Postman. We all learned a lot, of course. Uh, two quick shout outs. Uh, shout out to Rohan Kulkarni, who is a student leader uh, for helping assist our students on Discord. And shout out to Michael Scott, not Michael Scott from the office, but Michael Scott in our Postman student community server for spreading the word about our Postman student programs. Uh, be sure, like Ruby said, to uh, check out our student programs, join the band, that is not a Spotify uh, pun, and uh, check out and make sure to be tuned in to our streams. Uh, that's the last one, I promise. And uh, yeah, that's all for me. Nice. Um, so I know we were like right there with the Spotify API with our challenge, um, but we had so many cool things happen along the way. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we saw the auth flow in Postman. We got to check out the docs. We got to really understand um, how to get that bearer token. We, we checked out how to uh, get it manually and through the auth helper in Postman. Um, and we also saw that import process. So lots to take away from this episode. Which brings me to our Kahoot game, because I know our Kahoot game has a lot to do with our episode. So if you've really been paying attention, you might be making our leaderboard pretty soon. Um, so Isaac, I know you have that pulled up on the side. I'm ready. Um, yeah, uh, I'm ready to share that screen super quickly, but I do want to remind folks that if you've never played Kahoot before, basically you just open up another browser tab um, and you go to kahoot.it. Let me throw that into the chat. And once you go there, you can log in using the code that you'll see on the screen pretty shortly. Um, you can log in to kahoot.it either on your phone, in your browser on your phone, or in another tab on your current browser. Um, but with that, let's just jump into the Kahoot game. I'm going to share Isaac's screen here, and we'll see what kind of questions we got about the stream today. Um, okay. Let's see. There it is. Grab that code really quickly. Looks like I'm going to throw it into the chat here in case we don't see it. I threw the first code in there, but yeah. Nice. Here's the game code. I'm going to see if I can answer these questions, too, because I haven't actually checked them out yet. So I'm curious to know what I gleaned from this episode. I don't know if Alexi wants to join in, too. I might as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 
join join the game. I'm excited to uh, see what everyone like who it, they get intense. So I'm excited. It's basically like the Olympics API Olympics for Postman. So join, join, join. Oh, interesting name, Soke Sala. Cool, let's give it another couple of seconds, see who else is able to jump in. We got Fabian. I did see Fabian contributing quite a bit to the, the chat here earlier. Thanks, Fabian, for your help and your input. All right, so Isaac, I know we're a little bit over time, so let's just jump into, oh, we got one more. Yeah, all right, up. Let's let's go. All right, let's see. Oops, this is this is not the right code. I'm going to switch over to the other one. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Give me no one worries. second. So jumping back into Kahoot.it, um, if you haven't played before, uh, this is basically like a quiz game. And if you get uh, the correct answer and you're the fastest one to get that correct answer, you end up on our leaderboard. Looks like Isaac's pulling up the game. I also happen to have it. Uh, yep, up. I have it now. OK, great. All right, just pull it up now. I can't wait to see the kinds of questions that we have today. I know usually there's like a really silly question. All right, so like, it's up. What's the code? 5330426. We had a couple of folks get really competitive the last time. <laughs> um, so let's see who ends up on top today. Might be Alexi, who knows? I'm gonna Hopefully show it's Alexi because, you know, Alexi was doing the demo here today. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know because uh, the, these games get pretty intense and we have people who are like first place for the whole first half of the game. And then in the last two questions, they just come back. So it gets really intense. It does, yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, awesome. let's give this one a go, uh, Isaac. All right. Yeah, let's start. Oh, nice. Somebody just made it. <laughs> In that second. Nice. Let's see what that first question is. True or false, you can create your own Spotify API project in Postman and share it with your friends as a collection. True or false? All right, let's see. We did talk about this one at the end, too. Um, I did kind of sneak that question in there so we could cover it today. Um, but I did ask Alexi uh, if there's a way that you can, uh, I don't want to give away the answer, but yeah. So for folks who are listening. Ooh. All right. And everyone got that one right. Good job. So you well, can <laughs> you can share it with your friends as a collection. Next. Oh wow. Awesome. Alexi in top. Peter in second. Fabian in third. Kahooty Man fourth. It's me last. <laughs> you can collaborate with your team at a hackathon using Postman thanks to features like is it forking? Is it pull requests? Is it adding comments to the team workspace? Or is it all of the above? Hmm. That could be tricky. Yeah. So if you're at a hackathon, what would you be using to share your, your work in Postman? I don't know. We got to see. All right. Two people chose the correct answer, all of the above. Yeah, so you would be forking, doing pull requests, and making comments. Mm hmm All right, looks like we got some people climbing up the ranks. Ooh, Kahooty Man's coming for you, Alexi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. You can level up your API skills by joining which of these Postman student programs? Is it Post Malone program? Is it the Postman challenge? Postman Master Program, Postman Student Expert Program. 
Mm. Leveling up your API skills. You know, this is reminding me that we could have used Post Malone as an artist. That's why I, yep. I thought about that too. Like I realized <laughs> that was one of the answer choices. Nice. Five people chose correctly. It's the Postman Student Expert Program. Oh, Ooh. Alexi, Kahuti Man is on fire coming for you. Yeah, it's coming for me now. <laughs> yep. They're on a streak. <laughs> yep. And we got Fabian, Peter, and Zemek. All right, next question. Question number four. What did today's guest, Alexi, say their role is here at Postman? Was it A, a DevOps engineer, B, an architect, he builds boats, C, <laughs> a back-end engineer, or D, a solutions architect? Ooh, I wonder who's doing like a quick LinkedIn search on the side. Somebody's <laughs> Googling him right now. Definitely looks like a boat builder. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> awesome. And the answer was D, a solutions architect. Good job to the people who chose that one. Oh, Fabian taking second, Kahuti Man third, Peter fourth, and then we got Samek. Nice. We got one question left. I would hope that uh, that Alexi knew that one. Who did we have? <laughs> right. That's true. Um, all right, final question. Who did we have on our stream to discuss hackathon tips and tricks? Was it Pooja? Was it Carson? Was it Abhinav or was it no one? Hmm. Who would have been talking about hackathon tips and tricks? Hmm. It could have been anybody, you know, or it could have been just you and me, Ruby. Yeah, we count as no one, I guess. <laughs> nice. The correct answer was Carson and we had no one actually had chosen that one. Okay. Hmm. Here we go. Here's the podium. Ooh. Who came in third here? Kahuti Man. Nice. nice. Way to go. Fabian. Nice. In second. And, oh, let's all hope. Fingers crossed. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I would be worried if Alexi was not. So Fabian, nice job right up there with Kahuti Man too. Awesome. Way to go, everyone. Thank you for playing. Awesome. So with that, oh, we are in a very strange formation here. There we go. <laughs> Um, with that, we had a lot of fun today. Thank you so much, Alexi, for joining us and for demoing the Spotify API and really like getting into the weeds about different ways we can approach uh, using that API. Um, and then Isaac, of course, my co-host, always with the great questions. So with that, we are all done with this episode and we'll see you in two weeks for our next episode. Bye, all. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.